You know, if it wasn't for the photographers and the people behind the cameras, the famoisie would not be so famous as they are. <music> Greetings and welcome back to Here's What I Heard. I'm Laura Degatis, your hostess. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. This Baldwin set shooting is just another example of what happens when you are so arrogant and full of yourself that you believe that you've become untouchable. By now, the world has probably well aware that one of the most pompous asses in the world allegedly accidentally killed someone and injured another that worked for him. Yes, they worked for him. He was producing this Western that he was starring in. That's what I keep hearing and reading anyway. In fact, everyone seems uber focused on bitchy Baldwin, including himself. I have yet to hear much about his victims, which especially now and in this case, if I never hear his name or see his sourpuss again, it will be too soon. From what I could tell and being that he's not on SNL anymore, most people were probably bored of his tired ass portrayal of Trump. Now, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love a good Trump joke as much as the rest of them. Lord knows there's plenty of stuff to rag on him about, and let's be honest, he is a great sport about it. Most jokes. But when you emulate him falsely to be political about your comedy rather than comedic about your politics, I just view that as hate. And hate ain't funny. It's pathetic. Do you know that hating someone actually usually means that you see something in that person that you either wish that you had or wish you could be? Not to mention the fact that acting in hate is just plain evil. Isn't it ironic that when one hates someone, they just can't seem to stop thinking about, talking about, or dwelling on how much they hate that person. But don't get me distracted. So being that I have little empathy or sympathy at all for his nor his family's arrogance coming back to bite them in the ass, while he claims victimhood over his whole thing and the fact that they're covering him, which actually f feels more like covering for him, my thoughts and prayers and condolences actually go out to his victims and their families. Don't forget, his wife pretended to be another nationality, even to the point of pretending she didn't know an English word. We have um, a, how do you say, a cucumber? Cucumbers. We and this guy has even been awful to his 12-year-old daughter. You know just how I feel about what a rude little pig you really are. You are a rude little pig, okay? So I thought I would do a little digging and find out more about and highlight the person that this pompous ass accidentally ended. I did notice almost immediately that not many folks are covering too much for the actual victims of Baldwin's negligence. I just keep hearing Baldwin this and Baldwin that and seeing him on almost all of my feeds. And I mean like wall to wall, I mean memes and everything, I mean that's how prominent this story has become. And as more things come out it even seems like this event is becoming a very convenient distraction from the Let's Go Brandon movement. Although not a very good one. Let's go Brandon! Hey. As I did the research for this video, I found out more and more about what was happening. We all know that first run news stories almost every time and every event like this are usually not the whole story and this story seems to be no different. And although at first it all seemed to be accidental, being that Baldwin was ultimately in charge as producer and the careless wielder of the instrument of death, he is ultimately responsible. 
Did you know that some fool on Twitter, the bathroom wall of social media, actually tried to convince folks that some Trump supporter <laughs> snuck in that live bullet there just as payback for his stupid portrayal of Trump? As if any Trump supporter would A, go near that fool, and B, ever be hired by that miserable hack. I think not. I also have a prediction about this debacle. Being that Bitch Baldwin was and is an avid gun control advocate, you would have thought he would have made a Dr. Hero film or something. Uh, another comedy? Maybe without needing guns? You hypocrite, you! I think that either once he gets past all the legal stuff or to make it look good as a consequence of all the legal stuff, he's going to use his platform and his guilt to become an even bigger advocate of taking away folks' Second Amendment rights. He'll cry and sob about how sorry he is for ever doing work that required a portrayal of guns and how wrong he was and how he's such a victim because of it, and that he's paid his dues from all the guilt he feels while trying to throw those he worked with or who worked with for him under the bus and telling all us regular folks who he thinks worship him to not be like him. He may even promise never ever to do another film on his honor that involves or even mentions guns Unless the mention is how bad they are and that no one should ever have one for any reason. What else would a miserable pompous ass with his history do? Only time will tell if I'm wrong about this, but uh, I see something like this or this coming. Maybe, just maybe, even all the other celebrities that grouped together the last time and took responsibility will be heard from again. And yet another monochromatic cringe video that we can all ridicule again. So watch out for more gaslighting from the anti-2A crew. Anyway, there was so much information about the famous alleged manslaughterer, it was hard to find much about Helena. The weirdest part about this whole thing is that she would probably not ever have been this famous at all had it not been for being offed by a very famous person, especially as ironic as this is. But before I get into all of that, I'm going live coming up December the 2nd, 7 p.m. Central. I'm calling the series Talk to Me America. My call in talk show will feature you. Call in and tell the universe how you feel about the topics that affect us the most. Let us know what your experience was when things we see happening have happened to you. We cannot be free without the freedom of speech, and I want to be a part of that freedom that we are guaranteed by our Creator. So stay tuned and get your voices ready to speak out. Spread the news and stay tuned for Here's What I Heard's Talk To Me America series coming up December the 2nd, 7 p.m. Central. In the meantime, please give us a like, a share, a subscribe, and a comment. You will be doing this on my call-in talk show, so start letting me know what you heard now in the comments. The best comments and the best phone calls will be featured in my videos all over the internet. The world wants to hear what you have to say, so call me and tell them like it is. A donation would be the ultimate and will help me get your voice out on as many platforms as possible. And you can follow me on those other platforms too. All of my links are below. Click on some of them, will ya? When doing research from what I could find, Helena Hutchins seemed like a very normal everyday person that had finally found and realized her passion in life and a dream of big time cinematography and was making it come true. That's awesome. Not to mention the fact that she seemed to have everything, a promising and rising career with supportive peers, almost 50 projects under her belt, and a loving and doting husband, 
and a beautiful son of nine years old. Her website gives you all the details of all the products that she's been involved in. Uh, the photography on there seems pretty cool. I like it. It's awesome in my opinion. But then again, I'm also an, an artist, so I appreciate good work and anyone that does convincing horror is always okay in my book. Uh, her life began in the Ukraine, which makes her an immigrant, where she grew up on a Soviet military base in the Arctic Circle. Oh, I can imagine how boring that was. Surrounded by reindeer and nuclear submarines. I guess she lived on a coast up there somewhere. Well, you can't have, unless the reindeers were on the submarines. She obtained a graduate degree in international journalism from Kyiv. That's K-Y-I-V, not K-I-E-V. It's Kyiv. National University. That's the reason why everybody corrected it. They have two places named very similarly. Uh, she worked as an investigative journalist with British Documentary Productions in Europe, where she did feature documentaries for the BBC and Discovery, prior to moving to New York City, where she got into fashion photography and more into cinematography. She decided to go further into the cinematography and then met a lot of her peers and later partners while going to the American Film Institute, where she mastered in 2015. Pretty great accomplishments, if you ask me. And it sounds like she either got some great grants or had a lot of money because those schools and even coming to America from anywhere else is expensive. I found an interview with her, so I'm going to let her tell you in her own words about some of her experience. As Ole mentioned, we met at UCLA Extension when I just moved to Los Angeles and I was just trying to figure out my way. Uh, here, but I started a little bit earlier uh, in Ukraine. I worked for, with a British uh, production company, news agency, and we did uh, feature documentaries for BBC and Discovery Channel before I moved to New York City. And in New York City, I really took on photography and uh, fashion photography. Oh, cool! I loved it a lot, um, and just wanted to make art films actually just something really big scale, beautiful art house cinema. You know, I was inspired. And uh, when I moved to Los Angeles, I tried to figure out like what the next step would be. Uh, where do you start when you yeah. don't know anybody? Yeah. <laughs> where do you begin? And I went to UCLA Extension just to, the, just to get my feet wet, you know, and I met Ole and we started making short films. And I realized that even though I was in directing certificate program, yeah. uh, I love shooting. I shot like 15 shorts there. Oh my gosh. So I kept shooting and, uh, I thought that's probably my calling because that that's a visual medium that I was really attracted yeah. to and lighting was my favorite thing. I started working at a lighting company just to improve my, my skills. Um, and that led to me going to the best institution for my profession that I consider. Uh, I went to AFI for cinematography, oh, yeah, yeah. did MFA in cinematography while Ole was doing UC, uh, USC yeah, school. You guys are <laughs> big uh, so, yeah, but we kept working even after that. And for you, did you always know this is what you wanted to do, like, early on? Not really, you know. Okay, like, I was kinda... trying to figure it out, you know, what yeah. you'd like to do. I, it's my third degree, so... <laughs> well, I think cinematography yeah. is so beautiful to be able to, like, know how, like, what fits in the frame. I think that's such a beautiful talent to have. Yeah, it's a passion, for sure. Yeah. Once you get the bug, you can't get out of it. <laughs> Needless to say, her peers and a lot of the folks behind the scenes community are hurt, shocked, dismayed at this uh, in real life tragedy. A lot of them are looking sideways at old Baldy too. She was married for 16 years to an attorney named Matthew, who is four years her junior. Younger man, eh? What a great deal for her, if you know what I mean. <laughs> there isn't much about her son. I actually didn't look up, up anything about her son, uh, as if losing his mother publicly wasn't enough, but then again, there shouldn't actually be anything about her son, even if there was. I wouldn't cover it here. Uh, I won't even mention his name. You can find it if you do enough of your own research or digging, but don't do that. Uh, just respect their wishes in this case and hope for his comfort in this horrible, horrible time for him. Her last post ever that was on her Instagram was of her on her day off, enjoying the pleasures of horseback riding in a beautiful landscape in New Mexico. R.I.P. fellow visual artist Helena Hutchins. You deserved much better than this. 
Word on the wire now is that Bitchy Baldwin could face charges or some kind of judicial retribution. In my opinion, he should by all means be held responsible for this travesty. If for no other reason, because he thought he was excluded from being responsible for his own actions. Not to mention that any of us that are not in that elite circle would be held in jail until the investigations were over and or our bail would be prohibitively expensive. Don't forget, he was the boss as well and there were already complaints and planned strikes due to unsafe working conditions. Not to mention two accidental gun discharges days before the actual fatality. So indeed, hold him responsible. I do hope you enjoyed my video today. Don't forget, I'm going live coming up December the 2nd, 7 p.m. Central. I'm calling the series Talk to Me America. My call-in talk show will feature you. Call in and tell the universe how you feel about the topics that affect us the most. Let us know what your experience was when things we see happening have happened to you. We cannot be free without the freedom of speech, and I want to be a part of that freedom that we are guaranteed by our Creator. So stay tuned and get your voices ready to speak out. Spread the news and stay tuned for Here's What I Heard's Talk To Me America series coming up December the 2nd, 7 p.m. Central. In the meantime, please give us a like, a share, a subscribe, and a comment. You will be doing this on my call-in talk show, so start letting me know what you heard now in the comments. The best comments and the best phone calls will be featured in my videos all over the internet. The world wants to hear what you have to say, so call me and tell them like it is. A donation would be the ultimate and will help me get your voice out on as many platforms as possible. And you can follow me on those other platforms too. All of my links are below. Click on some of them, will ya? Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Until next time.